Greetings, my cosmic explorers. I'm May Tobol, your guide to the mysteries of the universe. Welcome back to my blog, where science meets attitude and wonder knows no bounds. Today, we're diving into one of the most mind-bending space mysteries of our time, Oumuamua, the interstellar rock that shocked our intelligence, and whether it's coming back. This topic is as thrilling as it is thought-provoking. To help us break it all down, I've brought along the brilliant Brian. So grab your coffee, fasten your seatbelts, and get ready for some serious celestial wisdom. Brian, the floor is yours. Thanks, May. I'll do my best to guide us through this thought-provoking topic. Let's explore the dreamscape together. Dear, on October 19th, 2017, the universe decided to drop by for coffee. Uninvited, mysterious, and gone before we could even offer a second cup. Astronomer Rob Werrick was scanning data from the PanStars telescope in Hawaii when he noticed something odd. Not just odd. Impossible, it was moving too fast, coming from outside our solar system, and it wasn't supposed to be there. This object, later named Oumuamua, Hawaiian for messenger from afar arriving first, became the first known interstellar object ever observed passing through our cosmic backyard. And right from the start, it broke every rule scientists thought they knew about space rocks, comets, and the weird things that fly through the void. Umamua didn't look like anything we were familiar with. It was tiny, estimated at around 377 feet long, 364 feet wide, and only 62 feet thick, and oddly shaped. Some said it looked like a cigar, others insisted it was more like a pancake. Either way, it was nothing like the roundish asteroids or fuzzy comets we usually see. And then came the weirdest part. As it passed the sun, it started to speed up. Not because of gravity, but for no apparent reason at all. It was as if someone had thrown a rock into a pond, and instead of sinking or floating away, the rock suddenly jetted off into the sky. No engines, no tail, just acceleration. Scientists were baffled. Was it a comet, an asteroid, a piece of alien tech, or something else entirely? Studying Oumuamua wasn't easy. By the time we spotted it, it was already leaving the solar system. Think of trying to analyze a car that just zoomed past your house at 100 miles per hour. Except this one was made of unknown material, didn't have license plates, and you only saw it in your rearview mirror. Most of what we know about Oumuamua comes from how it reflected sunlight. As it tumbled through space, its brightness changed dramatically every few hours, sometimes by a factor of 10. This told us two things. It was very elongated, and it was spinning like a drum in a washing machine set to chaos. We also use light curves, graphs that track how an object's brightness changes over time, to estimate its shape and size. These measurements suggested a pancake-like structure, which confused astronomers even further. Objects like that are rare in our solar system, though NASA's New Horizons mission did spot a similar shape when it flew past Arakoth, a Kuiper Belt object nicknamed Ultima Thule. But the real mystery came from its movement. After rounding the sun, Oumuamua began to accelerate in a way that couldn't be explained by gravity alone. Comets often do this when they release gas and dust, a sort of natural rocket engine. But Oumuamua showed no signs of outgassing, no tail, no coma. It was clean, smooth, and utterly perplexing. So, how do you study something that refuses to follow the rules? You throw everything you've got at it. Telescopes, radar, spectroscopy, even social media. Scientists scrambled to point every available instrument at Oumuamua while it was still visible, hoping to catch one last clue before it vanished forever into interstellar space. When faced with the inexplicable, scientists don't panic, they theorize. And boy, did they theorize. One early idea was that Oumuamua was a nitrogen ice fragment from a Pluto-like world. Alan Jackson and Steve Desch from Arizona State University proposed that if Oumuamua were made of nitrogen ice, it could explain both the strange reflectivity and the unexpected acceleration. Nitrogen sublimates easily under sunlight, creating a gentle push without producing much visible outgassing. If true, this would make Oumuamua a piece of an exoplanet surface flung into space after some violent cosmic event. Another theory proposed by Daryl Seligman and Jennifer Bergner from Cornell and Berkeley suggested that Oumuamua might have been coated in hydrogen trapped in amorphous ice. 
When warmed by the sun, the hydrogen escaped, giving the object a subtle nudge forward, again without leaving any obvious trail. Then there was the most controversial idea of all. What if Oumuamua wasn't natural at all? Harvard astronomers Amir Siraj and Abraham Loeb floated the possibility that Oumuamua could be a solar sail, a thin, reflective object designed to ride on sunlight itself. Solar sails aren't science fiction, they're real technology being tested by organizations like the Planetary Society. But if Oumuamua was artificial, who built it? Why? And where was it going? Loeb, in particular, became the lightning rod for this debate. He argued that since we had no precedent for such an object, we shouldn't dismiss the possibility that it was of extraterrestrial origin. His ideas sparked headlines, debates, and more than a few eye rolls from skeptical colleagues. Of course, many scientists believe the answer is simpler that Oumuamua is just a new kind of natural object we hadn't seen before. Maybe it's a dark comet, a type of icy body that doesn't produce much visible outgassing. Or maybe it's a shard of a planet torn apart by gravitational forces. The truth is, we don't know. And that's what makes Oumuamua so exciting. Let's get one thing straight. Oumuamua isn't just weird, it's uniquely weird. First, its trajectory was hyperbolic. That means it wasn't orbiting the sun like planets or asteroids. It came from deep space, made a brief visit and left for good. Unlike comets like Borisov, another interstellar visitor discovered in 2019, Oumuamua didn't show any signs of being a traditional comet. No coma, no tail, no outgassing. Just a silent, tumbling object zipping through our solar system like it owned the place. Second, its acceleration defied explanation. Even now, years later, there's no consensus on why it sped up. Most comets gain speed due to the jet effect of vaporized ice. But Oumuamua gave no sign of doing that. Third, its shape and composition were unlike anything we'd ever seen. Pancake-shaped, reflective like a comet nucleus, small enough to be invisible until it was almost gone. It was like the universe handed us a puzzle with half the pieces missing. And finally, its path brought it incredibly close to Earth just 0.16 astronomical units away, or about 24 million kilometers. That's practically knocking on our door in cosmic terms. Given the vastness of space, the odds of such a close encounter were astronomically low. Unless, of course, it wasn't random. Some people say that's just chance. Others, like Loeb, argue that the precision of the approach suggests something intentional. Coincidence or conspiracy, science or sci-fi, we may never know. Before Oumuamua, scientists assumed interstellar objects would look like comets, icy, faint and predictable. Then along came Oumuamua, throwing those assumptions into a black hole. Since then, we've spotted other interstellar visitors like 2i slash Borisov, which did behave like a normal comet. But none have matched Oumuamua's strangeness. There are theories that dark comets, icy bodies that don't emit much dust or gas, might explain some of what we saw. In fact, some experts think we might spot one in 2031, but even if that happens, it won't fully solve the Oumuamua riddle. What makes Oumuamua truly unique is that it appeared to defy classification. It wasn't a comet, asteroid or meteoroid, it was something new, or at least something we hadn't seen before. And that's a big deal. Imagine if Columbus had landed in America and found kangaroos. That's kind of what happened here, except in reverse and with telescopes. If Oumuamua was natural, it tells us that the universe is full of surprises that planetary systems can eject all sorts of bizarre objects into interstellar space. It hints that we might one day find more of these visitors, each telling a story about the worlds they came from. But if Umamua was artificial, even partially, it changes everything. Suddenly, we're not just looking at rocks flying through space. We're looking at messages, machines, or even fragments of alien engineering. The implications are staggering. It would mean intelligent life exists beyond Earth and that it has the capability to send objects across interstellar distances. Even Loeb, who insists he follows the evidence like Sherlock Holmes, admits that the burden of proof is high. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and we simply don't have enough yet. But he also argues that we shouldn't ignore possibilities just because they sound far-fetched. In the end, Oumuamua has forced humanity to confront a question we've asked for centuries. Are we alone? Maybe we'll never know for sure. But thanks to Oumuamua, we're asking better questions, the Zed Jazz, and looking harder than ever. If you've ever watched a shooting star streak across the sky, you know the bittersweet feeling. 
beautiful, brief, and gone before you can even make a wish. That's exactly what happened with Umamua. Umamua didn't come for a long vacation. It came, it saw, it left, and it's not planning to return. Its trajectory was hyperbolic, meaning it came from outside the solar system and will leave for good. There's no elliptical loop back home, no scheduled return like Halley's Comet. Once it passes Neptune, it's heading straight into deep space. By now, it's already well past Neptune, traveling at over 54 kilometers per s, faster than any human-made object. At that speed, catching up would require technology we don't yet possess. Unless someone invents a warp drive or finds a wormhole shortcut. Technically speaking, yes, it could come back if the universe collapses in a big crunch and somehow sends Oumuamua boomeranging back toward us, but that's about as likely as winning the lottery twice while getting struck by lightning. No, Oumuamua is gone for good. But here's the twist. We might not need to wait for Oumuamua. The real excitement lies not in chasing Oumuamua, but in preparing for the next interstellar visitor, because now we know they're out there. Since Oumuamua, we've spotted another confirmed interstellar object, 2i slash Borisov, which behaved more like a traditional comet, and who knows what else is zooming through our solar system unnoticed. With upcoming observatories like the Vera C. Rubin Observatory, set to begin full operations in 2025, we'll be scanning the skies more thoroughly than ever before. Sooner or later, another Oumuamua-like object will appear, and next time we'll be ready. Maybe we'll spot it early enough to send a probe. Maybe we'll finally get a close-up image. Or maybe, just maybe, we'll discover something even stranger. So while Oumuamua may be gone, it hasn't left us empty-handed. It gave us questions, mysteries, and a reason to keep looking up. And that's the best kind of goodbye. And there you have it, my galactic pals. The stars may nudge us with mystery, but it's up to us to listen and to dream even bigger. If you love this episode, show us some love with a like, hit subscribe for more interstellar insights, and drop a comment telling us what resonated most with you. Until next time, stay bold, stay bright, and keep reaching for the stars. <laughs>